Hey, welcome to Easter with Impact. We're so stoked you joined us today. What an incredible day it is to be able to celebrate the resurrection of Jesus Christ. We are here to worship, to get into the Word together. Again, so glad you're here. Hope you enjoy yourself. Let's get into worship. Church Easter is one of the most important moments, holidays, celebrations of our faith. And yet it seems like if you've been in the church a while, somehow it's easy to get disenchanted with it. Uh, maybe it's just too big in our lives to recognize what it would mean to have someone die for you and then raise to life again. Maybe that's just too big of a concept or Maybe right now you're struggling so much that you can't even focus on these big ideas, eternity. You just need to survive right now. 
And so how about this? How about in addition to dying for your sins, conquering death and saving you by grace to give you an eternity with him. In addition to that, Christ conquered death to show you that there's not a single thing you're going through right now that he can't handle. Whether you're experiencing loss or divorce or financial struggles, whatever it may be, is there anything bigger than him? Is there anything more impossible than coming back to life? He can do it, and he wants to restore you today. Let's sing this song. It says over and over, my God did not fail.
Everybody, it is great to be here with you today on Resurrection Sunday morning. We have so much to be thankful for, so much to celebrate here together as the people of God. And so if you're joining us online, uh, we just want to thank you for being here to, to celebrate that together as the church family. Uh, I, I know that, that it's been a, a rough couple of years for a lot of people, and, and we say things like we have so much to celebrate. Sometimes it kind of seems like day to day that, that we're not really feeling feeling it, right? We're not feeling that celebration. And so we read things in scripture, like in 2 Corinthians 5, where if anyone is in Christ, he's a new creation, that old things have passed away and all things have been made new. And we understand it here, but we don't necessarily feel it here. That 18 inches it needs to travel, that truth, it doesn't always make it. Because day to day, we deal with so many challenges and so many hardships. I think back to my mother-in-law who you used to tell a story as she was a preschool teacher for many, many years. And she shared uh, an illustration she wanted to provide for her preschool kids. And she was so excited about it. She'd heard it done before. And so she went out and bought a terrarium and placed a bunch of caterpillars in the terrarium. And she brought it into the classroom and her 20 preschoolers all gathered around and they gave them names. And they were so excited to be able to watch these caterpillars grow. Well, one day, of course, the caterpillars, uh, when the, the kids came in, were in their cocoons. And, and the, the, my mother-in-law, her name was Judy, she, she brought all the kids together and they were confused. And she explained how the caterpillars were in these cocoons and that God was changing them. And sure enough, after some time, they came in one morning and in the place of these cocoons were seven to eight beautiful butterflies. And so my mother-in-law just gathered them all together and shared how this is what Jesus does for us. He gives us new life. 
And she brought the caterpillars and the terrarium outside and had this special moment where she released them one by one. And she let the first one go and the kids all celebrated and rejoiced at this new life they were seeing fly away beautifully. And, and then she went down to get the second one and some of the kids started shouting and screaming, saying, Miss Judy, no, no, no. And she looked up as she released the second butterfly only to see a giant bird come swooping down and snatch up that second butterfly like it had done the first. So she quickly closed the terrarium and she shared that story with myself, with my wife, Tracy, and she was mortified by what had happened and I couldn't stop laughing. I thought it was a great story. But you know, some of us feel a lot like this, don't we? We feel like we've been promised this new life in Christ and the power of the resurrection and who Jesus is, that he died and he brought forgiveness to us and, and he rose again so we could walk in freedom and, and this new life that he's promised. But day to day, it doesn't always seem like we have that new life. Sometimes it seems like we are still struggling with the same old things, the same sin, the same shame that comes along with it, the same guilt, the same challenges we face in a, on, a, on a daily basis. And we're wondering when things are gonna get better and when this new life is really gonna kick in. I know somebody else that felt that way and it happened very quickly after Jesus rose from the dead some 2000 years ago. And I wanted to read a little bit about him today. His name is Simon Peter. And he was one of Jesus' disciples and walked with him and followed him for three years. And he had a lot of hope that his life has, was going to change for the better. And that in following Jesus, he was going to discover new things and, and, and have new life himself. But of course, we know the story that Jesus went to the cross and, and he died for our sin. But his disciples, Peter included, didn't fully understand what was going on. And so he had so much confusion and despair, thinking all of his dreams and this new life he had aspired to it was all gone. He thought it all had died along with Jesus on that cross. But then he started hearing some rumors a few days later. Some women who went to visit the tomb, we read in John chapter 20, came back telling these incredible stories of the stone being rolled away and the grave being empty. And they started sharing that he was alive, that they had seen him face to face. And so Peter found out himself when Jesus appeared standing right in front of him, along with the other disciples, that the stories were true. Jesus was indeed alive. And there's a lot of hope that comes with that. But in John chapter 21, we read a story of, of Peter having a, a conversation with Jesus. And I wanted to read that starting in verse one together today as we celebrate the resurrection and the new life it brings to each one of us discovering together what that new life looks like and what it means. In verse one, we read this, after this, after Jesus revealed himself to the disciples, he revealed himself again to his disciples by the sea of Tiberias. And he revealed himself in this way, Simon, Peter, Thomas called the twin, Nathaniel of Cana in Galilee, the sons of Zebedee, who we know to be James and John, and two others of his disciples were together. Simon Peter said to them, I'm going fishing. And they said to him, we will go with you. They went out and got into the boat, but that night they caught nothing. The beginning of this new life for Peter here after Jesus rose from the dead, didn't start maybe the way he had hoped it would. He, he kind of got his disciple friends together and he said, I'm going fishing. Now this seems like a, a pretty common statement. Maybe you've seen the bumper stickers that said, I'd rather be fishing. But this wasn't a recreational thing for Simon Peter. Before he met Jesus, he was a fisherman. It's what he did. It was his career, his vocation. But everything changed in the Gospel of Luke. We read about it in the fifth chapter. When Jesus came and asked to use Simon Peter's boat, and he and his, his partner were out fishing all night long, but they had caught nothing. And Luke chapter 5 tells us that when Jesus started to teach the multitudes from their boat, he turned afterward and looked at Peter and he said, why don't you cast your nets to the deep water, to the other side of the boat? Now, Peter's a fisherman. He grew up on the Sea of Galilee. He knew those waters like the back of his hand. But he said, Lord, we have fished all night. We've caught nothing. But at your command, at your request, we'll do what you say. 
And so they threw the nets into the water and the gospel tells us they caught such a haul of fish, so many that their nets were ripping, they couldn't even contain it. And when they pulled it into the boat, calling their friends for help, even the boat itself started to sink. When Peter saw this miracle, he ran and he fell at the feet of Jesus and he recognized his own sin, that he was standing in the presence of God's son and his holiness. And he said, depart from me, Lord, for I am a sinful man. But Jesus looked at Peter and he said, from now on, you will be fishing for men. And from that moment, everything for Simon changed, including his name. Jesus said, you are Peter, the rock man. And upon this rock, I'm gonna build my church. And now three years later, Jesus goes to the cross after Simon had given his life to follow Christ, after he'd seen him do the miraculous, he sees Jesus die. He sees him again standing in front of him, having risen from the dead. And yet we see that Peter makes this statement, I'm going fishing. See, for Peter, this was a, a, a bold declaration that he was gonna go back to his old life, that life that he knew before, because he had a, a failure that the Gospel of Matthew tells us about that he denied Jesus three times. When people asked him, are you a follower of Christ? Peter said, no, I never knew the man. And he even began swearing. And in that moment, Jesus turns and looks at him and Peter felt so much shame because of his denial. And so he was convinced that Jesus was done with him. He could no longer be a disciple, that he needed to return to his old life. Maybe you today have felt like you've just messed up too much. Like God himself must be done with you because you've made so many promises, so many commitments, but you keep failing him over and over and over again. The new life we have in Christ means we don't have to go back to that old life anymore. That we can walk in that newness of life and understand fully what it means. The story continues in verse four. We read that just as day was breaking, Jesus stood on the shore. Yet the disciples did not know that it was Jesus. They didn't recognize him. Jesus said to them, children, do you have any fish? And they answered him, no. He said to them, cast the net on the right side of the boat and you will find some. So they cast it and now they were not able to haul it in because of the quantity of fish. You know that in this moment, something was stirring inside of Peter, inside of the other disciples who were there three years before. They were there and saw the miracle that had happened. And here, there was a sense that it was about to happen all over again. This new life in Christ, they needed to go back to the beginning to experience once again. Jesus brought Peter back to the place of his calling, to where it all started reminding him of his call. Guys, the new life that we have in Christ, this resurrection life is a life of calling and purpose. It's a life where we don't have to wonder or wander aimlessly anymore. We are called to a greater purpose where, where he knows us and has called us to build his kingdom and to make disciples, to be fishers of men. So no matter how hard things may get, no matter how dark times may seem, no matter how many giant birds are out to get us, we have life in him and we have purpose. We read that the disciple whom Jesus loved, who's John, said to Peter, it's the Lord. And when Simon Peter heard that it was the Lord, he put on his outer garment for he was stripped for work and he threw himself into the sea. And the disciples, the other disciples came in the boat, dragging the net full of fish for they weren't far off from the land, but about a hundred yards off. I love this moment in the story because Peter had gone through a lot and he had so much hope, but he kept failing. He, he walked around with a constant limp, metaphorically speaking, because he constantly had his foot in his mouth. Peter was the guy who would make all these bold declarations saying, God, I'll never leave you. Jesus, I'm gonna be with you till the end. He was always trying to be that leader and be out in front and do the right things. One time they're in a boat with his fellow disciples and there's a storm raging. They're afraid they're gonna die. And Jesus comes walking out into the water and Peter is afraid with the disciples and Jesus says, don't be afraid, it's, it's I, it's me. And Peter said, Lord, if it's you, tell me to come out there on the water with you. Now, I don't know about you, but that was a risky move on Peter's part. 
He meant well. He wanted to be that courageous leader. If it was me, I would have been in the boat and said, Lord, if it's you, I'm thinking of a number between one and 10. Tell me what it is and I'll come out there with you. Something safer. But Jesus said, come. And Peter got out onto the, the water and he walked on those waves. But then suddenly he turned around and started seeing all of the, the giant waves around him. He began to fear. He took his eyes off of Christ and he began to sink and Jesus needed to save him. But this was Peter. He always meant to speak out and say the right things, but he would end up getting rebuked by Christ and saying all the wrong things. And ultimately it culminated as we discussed before where he denied Jesus. When he swore he would never do it three times, just like Jesus predicted he would, and he denied him. And he was convinced there's no way I can ever come back. But now here in this moment, when he recognizes it's Christ, he doesn't do what he did in Luke chapter five, three years before. He doesn't say, Jesus, depart from me. I'm a sinful man. He knows he's a sinful man, but now, now he can't get to Jesus fast enough. He jumps into the water and starts swimming to the shore just to be with Christ. Guys, you don't have to hide anymore. You don't have to cover yourself and live in shame and defeat anymore. The resurrection means you are forgiven and accepted. And all we need to do is run to Christ, even in our failure, not away from him. This story ends in verse nine. We read that they got out on the land and they saw a charcoal fire in place with fish laid out on it. And there was bread. And Jesus said to them, bring some of the fish that you've just caught. So Simon Peter went aboard, hauled the net ashore, brought all the fish in. And although there were so many, 153 of them, the net was not torn. And Jesus said to them, come and have breakfast. And none of the disciples dared ask them, who are you? They knew it was the Lord. We read that Jesus sat and shared a meal with them. Guys, the new life, the resurrection life we have in Christ is a life of purpose. It is a life, life of freedom and forgiveness where we can go to Jesus, even in our sin and failure. And it's also a life of relationship with our creator. Jesus wants you to know him and, and he wants you to know how he knows you and he loves you. He wants to dine with you and fellowship with you and be there for you no matter what, because we do not serve a God who died and was buried and stayed there. We serve a God who rose again from the dead and is present and here with you even today, no matter what. And his promise is that he is with us always till the end of the age. He is risen, which means we can rise too through his power, by his spirit, and because of his grace and what he's done for us. Let's pray together. Father, we thank you for this Resurrection Sunday, the reminder that that grave is empty and that our lives no longer need to be. God, I pray we will leave that old life behind, that we will remain fishers of men, serving you in a greater purpose to build your kingdom. God, I pray we will remember and live out your kingdom and your resurrection power every day and that we will walk in the newness of life that you have for us. I pray a blessing on all who are listening in this morning. Bless their time with family. And Lord, help us move forward together in new life. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. God bless you guys. He is risen. <laughs>